So today I'm going to install this little surface mount 12 volt uh, socket, 12 volt plug with USB plugs on the other side. Um, so this is a flush mount. I'm going to try and install this um, behind the center console here in my 2019 Nissan Frontier crew cab. Um, so as you can see right here, this is the cup holder, right? Let's see, that, that kind of flips out cup holder storage there, but there's no, there's no outlets in the back seat area for passengers. And actually I'm installing this because I just got a, uh, I just picked up a 12 volt fridge for camping purposes and sorry for the mess back seat there, but, um, all right. So to get started, I've got kind of a pile of junk here. So I've got, um, wire strippers, a screwdriver, a pair of beat up old channel locks that I use just for crimping connectors onto wires. I don't have a real crimper um, and some electrical tape. And I'm hoping that's going to be all we'll need for this. Um, so I've got this uh, 12 volt three way splitter here. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to chop these three plugs off the end. Um, and we're going to rewire these to the back of here as well as to the, uh, to the 12 volt plug that's inside the center console. So basically we're going to be using this as a three way splitter without these sockets on the end, right? Um, these cables came with this guy. Um, so, so this, this set and this thing I just got on Amazon, I think they're 10 or 12 bucks a piece. Um, so it's pretty short money. Um, so let's get started here. Okay. So I'm sitting in the driver's seat right now. Um, and I'm just going to pop open the center console and I've got a bunch of junk down in there, including a GMRS radio and AAA car, a little bit of cash, garage door opener and so on and so forth. Um, so you can see here's the 12 volt socket that's inside the console, right? So we're actually going to tap the wiring that's off. We're going to tap the wiring on the back side to, to power those other two sockets as well, right? So we're basically going to be having three sockets driven from the same set of wiring. So first thing we got to do is to um, remove these three screws here. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that here. Okay, so I've got these three screws removed. And all that does is those three screws just hold that hinge down for the lid of the console, right? So I'm going to pull that off and just toss it in the passenger seat for the time being. Um, I just threw the three screws down there in the cup holder so I don't lose them. Okay, I've moved around to the back seat here. I apologize about the lighting here. It's a little bit dark, but um, in theory, this panel should pop right off now, I hope. Let's see if we can get that guy off of there. Actually, I'm just going to stop the video here for a second and see if I can get that off. Okay, so what I did is I, I was able to pop out the bottom part pretty easily. So this just kind of pulls out. There's a couple of um, there's a couple of pegs you can kind of see right there. Oh, you can see that peg. Maybe it'll focus over me. Oh, maybe not. Um, so there's a peg on either corner here, and those just kind of pull straight. The whole thing just kind of pulled straight out. Um, so that was pretty straightforward. Um, this thing just doesn't want to focus. I apologize here. So now. I don't know if this is going to come straight out or not. All right, I'm just going to stop the video again. I need two hands for this. Okay, that took me a little longer than I thought, but um, my problem was that my WeatherTech mat was in the way. So if you've got any floor mats in the back, you just want to kind of pull them out of the way. So you see I had to kind of pull this mat up, up out of the way. It was block, blocking the, the cover, but the cover itself just has these four clips on the back. So this guy here, actually, I guess it's more than four. One, two, three, four, five, six clips. Um... And you can kind of see what those look like. They just, you, you literally just got to kind of yank on it and they, they pop right out of the, um, the holes right here and so on. Um, so now I have that cover out. So what we're going to do is, um, our cutout will be, uh, right in this area here, right? So we'll just cut, we'll cut the, the slot out there for the, um, for the connectors. One other thing I wanted to point out, I just realized I can turn the light on the phone here to make the lighting a little bit better. Um, so what we're going to do here for the wiring is these are the, these are the wires that we're going to splice into, right? So this is the this is the connector for the 12 volt sock on the inside, and I've got my radio plugged in right there. But um, what we're going to do is we're going to cut these cut and splice these wires, and we're going to run the one end of that three that um, that three way splitter to the power wires here, and then we'll run the the uh, the other ends of it to the different sockets. Okay, so I'm looking at the three-way splitter here for a second, and one thing I just wanted to point out about this um, is that there's actually a fuse inside of this the male plug here. Um, so you, all you have to do is unscrew the um, unscrew the tip here, pop that off, and you can see there's a fuse in there, 
right, so I'm just gonna, we're gonna keep that fuse. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna, um, I'm probably gonna end up using one of these three plugs that I cut off and I'll, I'll wire the back end, I'll, I'll wire like these wires from one of these plugs um, onto the other, onto the other wires down there. And then we'll plug, we'll just plug this guy right into that so that we get to keep the, the benefit of that extra fuse. Okay, so I've cut my three um, female connectors off the wire harness here. So you can see two of them I cut off flush near or near flush. The other one I left left a little bit of extra wire on there. So that, that's the one that will hook up to the um, to the, the wiring that's coming from the battery. Um, so yeah, and we'll keep we're gonna keep the male end on the end of that. And uh, yeah, so far so good. Okay, so the next step I did here is on all these wires that I cut off, I just separated the reds and the blacks. Um, and you can literally just grab the two wires with your, you know, separate it kind of with your fingernails and pull them apart. Uh, a little bit tough. Um, if that's too tough on your fingers, you can always just take a little exacto knife and just, you know, slice down in between the insulation. Um, just got to be careful you don't break through, right? Okay, so I just wanted to show you here. I'm uh, I'm undoing this uh, this electrical tape right here. So there's some electrical tape wrapped around those two wires. So this this top one, I'm just I'm just kind of unwrapping that. Just like a little bit better access to the wires. You could probably cut them first and then unwrap it, but I'm just doing that first. Okay, you can see I got that tape off of there now. So now I'm just gonna I'm just gonna cut these somewhere right in there. Leave a little bit of extra length here so I can strip it back and splice it to the other harness. Um, but we'll cut it somewhere down in there. Okay, so you can see I've spliced my I've cut my my wire there. Um, next step is going to be to strip off the ends of these and also strip off the ends on a, on a, the three-way splitter that I cut up before. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so you can see I got the ends stripped off there. All right, and just a comment here: um, this outlet in in my truck is um, is not hot unless the uh, the key is set to the accessory position. Um, and I know that for a fact because I tried to turn on the radio without the key in it and it doesn't turn on at all. So we know this outlet is, or we know these, these wires are not live at the moment. Um, if you, you know, depending on your vehicle, if you're, you always want to check and make sure um, uh, whether your outlet is hot with the accessory switch on or, or all the time. Um, if it's on all the time, you probably want to disconnect your battery or pull a fuse in your fuse box just to make sure that you don't have power to these two wires. So I know for a fact right now, I don't have, I don't have power to either of these. Um, which is why I don't mind kind of stripping them and leaving them hanging like that. So just a point of caution there. Okay, you can see I've got my wires stripped here on my three-way splitter. And I also stripped the wires on this, um, one of the female connectors that I that I cut off, right? So this is going to get wired into those, those lines that are coming in from the battery. Um, one other point I wanted to make too is that I, um, one of the tools I forgot to add here was a... Uh, the soldering iron, right? So I'm going to be soldering some wires together. So you will need soldering iron and some solder if you're going to attempt this. Okay, so I took the time to um, test which wires were positive and negative here um, just to make sure that my three-way splitter, just to make sure I wire everything up right. So um, I just want to point out here that there's a, there's a green and yellow wire and there's a black wire. And it turns out that the green and yellow... Um, is actually uh, positive and the black is is negative so the green that that kind of threw me a little bit because the um i mean black normally is negative but the the green and yellow um I, i've worked with 12 and 24 volt dc power and other applications and the green and yellow is typically denote typically denotes ground um so just be aware that green and yellow in this case is is positive right so i so i checked the um so positive is the is the tip of the the male connector um or the little button at the bottom of the female connector and then uh, the negative is kind of the outside, the outside housing here, um, and that's that's black. So um, just make sure you wire those in right, because you don't want to, um, you don't want reverse polarity going to your, you know, whatever appliances you plug into this thing afterwards. Okay, so I'm just about ready to start soldering in here. So the first thing I'm going to do is solder in this female connector um, to the to the lines that are coming in from the um, the ignition switch or the battery. Um, and so I've got my I've got my my plug with the end stripped. Um, I've got a little roll of solder here, and I have my Soldering iron is hot and ready on the floor down there. Um, so I need to figure out how I'm not going to burn the inside of the truck here. Um, but let me take some time to do that and I'll be right back. Okay. Um, so I just wanted to show you, I, I've tinned the, the wires that I'm going to be soldering together. So I've tinned the ends of the, the connector. Um, and I've also, um, I've tinned 
the ends of these guys. I got a little booger hanging off there, but whatever. Um, so now I got to tin the ends of the ones, the, the wires that are kind of um, under the center console there. And then um, it should just be a matter of holding the solder iron to the two sets of wires and putting them together. Okay, so I've got the, uh, I've got all four of those wires tinned right there. And I apologize for not showing you any video of how I do that. But I mean, all it is, you, could, you there's, I'm sure there's videos out there on how to, how to tin the ends of wires. But um, basically, all you're doing is touching the, touching the solder iron to the tip of the wire, or you're touching the solder iron to the wire. Um, let it heat up the copper in the wire, and then touch the solder to the hot copper, and it just kind of melts through the tip of the wire there and just kind of coats it in solder. Um, it just makes it that much easier when you go to stick two wires together. You know, if you have both ends tinned, um, you don't need to add any additional solder. All you do is just kind of put the two wires together and heat it up, and the solder just kind of melts together. Um, so um, I managed not to managed not to burn any of the plastic in the truck, which I'm happy about. Um, so we'll see see how it goes when we put the two wires together here. So I'm going to do that right now. Okay, so I've got the um, I've got the the female connector wired into the lines that are coming in from the ignition switch or the um, battery there. Sorry for the focus here. For some reason, my camera just doesn't want to focus. But there we go. Um, so I decided before I wire in the um, the three way connector um, splices to this um, to the the plug that's in the console. I'm actually I have to put the spade terminals um, on the other parts of that. Um, it's just going to be easier to crimp those outside the truck. So we'll do that right now. Okay, I got my connectors crimped on the end there. Um, they went on pretty easy. The crimps aren't the prettiest, but I'm using a pair of channel lock pliers to crimp, so good enough. Serve for the purpose. Okay, so we're all soldered. We got all the soldering done here. So um, you can see the female connector down there. We've got um, one of the three splices going up to the existing connector. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to individually wrap each one of these connections with some electrical tape. Um, just to make sure we don't have any risk of shorts or anything like that. Okay, so we have everything hooked up here. So I've got my the connector that'll go on the panel. All right, those two plugs are coming off that three-way splitter. The other one is going up to the existing um, socket in the in the console. Um, we have the male end from the three-way splitter going into the female end, which is soldered to those wires that are coming from the from the ignition of the battery there. So I'm going to turn on the uh, Accessory switch and see that little little light lights up right there. Hopefully everything works. Success. So I'm pretty pleased with that. All right, let's see if the radio works. Yep. Success. I'm pretty happy about that. All right, so next step is going to be to cut the panel and get that. Get those, uh, get those sockets mounted up. Okay, so I'm getting ready to lay out my, um, my cutout for my plug here. Right, so this guy basically is going to go in there like that. Um, so to get this lined up, I'm using a combination square just to kind of measure. And I have one of the um, one of the screws that came with the, the socket set, right? So that screw will go into one of these corners here, All right, like that. Um, so right now I'm just going to be using it for marking, just to mark the mark the plastic over here. Oops. I got that solder stuck in there now. Okay. So what I'm going to do, what I've done is I've opened the, the rubber plugs and you can see the face of these things kind of sits flush there. Um, and this, this, this piece is kind of flexible. The, the, f the front face plate is a little bit flexible there. You can see. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm actually flipping it over, um, face down on the, on the plastic here, which is a little, has a little bit of a curve to it, right? Um, so what I'm doing is I'm putting that face down. I'm just trying to center it left to right and top to bottom. Um, and I'm actually going to use the I'm going to use the combination square just to measure distances from either edge and from top to bottom. Um, and then what I'm going to do is use the use the little screw there and just just put it down through these these corner holes and literally just mark the plastic. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. I'm going to stop the camera because I need two hands, but. So as I started to do that, I was uh, actually realized that these plugs actually can come right out. So there's these little locking screws on the back here. So if you just loosen these guys all the way up, um, the, the, the plugs will pop right out. So then it'll just be left with a bare face plate. So I'm just going to do it that way instead. It'll be a little bit easier. I've got my holes marked here. Um, so you can kind of see the, uh, the outlines of the two larger holes there in pencil. Um, and you can kind of just see the, the marks that I put in with the screws. So one there, one up here. Um, one down here, and the other one I think is 
hard to see the camera somewhere up in that upper right hand corner. Um, so anyway, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try and use a, um, a spade bit um, to, and I actually run it in reverse in the drill to try and cut these holes out. Now I've, I've had pretty good luck doing it that way in the past. Um, I'm going to experiment a little bit here and just kind of see what I can do. Okay, so I actually have a 15 sixteenths uh, spade bit, um, just a little Makita cordless drill here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to run this in reverse. So if you look at the spade bit, you'll notice that the um, the little edges here, the tips on the edges are, are um, bent up a little bit one way. And normally when you're cutting through wood or something, you want the you want the um, the end that's tipped up, kind of spinning forward and cutting into the wood. Um, in this case, what I found with plastic is that um, it, it tends to work a little bit better if you go the, uh, the opposite direction with it because um, it doesn't catch and, and chew it up quite as badly. So I'm going to give this a shot. Just going to go real slow. Um, so this bit is actually a little bit smaller than the diameter of my holes that I've marked out here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and center the drill bit here and then um, get the get the two holes punched through and then I'll probably end up using a Dremel or a, a, a utility knife or something to, to clean up and to bring the to open the holes out to the the um, where, the, where my pencil mark is there. So I, I just want to be real careful because what I don't want to have happen is, is you know, end up blowing out the side of where my mark is um, and having that showing, you know, from behind the faceplate on the on the connectors. So I'm going to go ahead and do this now. Um, I'll see if I can set up a tripod actually and capture some footage here. So you want this in uh, the slower speed for sure. Uh, and then again in reverse. I'm just going to try and do this nice and slow. Hopefully I don't screw it up here. That looks pretty good. I'm pretty well centered in that hole. I'm just going to keep going here nice and slow. That's probably all good on me. So far, so good. Just take your time with this. It's not worth screwing it up because we only got one of these panels right now. So. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna stop the camera and finish this up because my battery's dying here, so. Okay, so I got my holes punched out here. Um, so what I, what I actually ended up doing is I, um, I went re in reverse with a spade bit for a couple of revolutions just to get the outline of the hole kind of marked out, just to, just to kind of get your starter groove there. And then I actually ended up switching it back to forward um, again, just going very, very slow speed, um, you know, just, just very, you know, you know, just a couple revolutions per minute. I mean, it was, it was kind of as, the, the slowest speed on the drill. Um, and just being really careful, um, trying not to let it slip or anything like that, just using real good kind of trigger control. Um, so this is, this hole on the, on the right here is, um, is, is one that's been done with the drill and I haven't, I haven't yet cleaned it out. The one on the left, I've actually started cleaning out with a utility knife. Um, and it's actually just about done. So that's, that's pretty much opened up to where it needs to be. Um, so I'm going to go back and I'm going to do the same thing here. Um, and it goes real quick with a sharp utility knife. Um, this plastic's not, you know, it's not super hard or anything. So um, it's 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 kind of going pretty pretty well. Okay, so I got my holes cleaned out. I'm actually trying to decide whether I want to even use that square piece, although I have my little corner marks there for the screw hole, so I probably end up using it. But I just pop these in just so you can see they came with these little lock rings. So they actually, um, when you use the plate, the lock rings will just hold the connectors to the plate. Um, but I don't know. We'll see. Okay. So after, uh, looking at it a little bit, I think I'm just going to stick with this. Um, not bothering to use the face plate. Those little, those little marks for the screws, they aren't very noticeable at all. So 
I'm just going to um, I'm going to leave it as is, and uh, I'll probably hang on to that plate just in case I change my mind later on. But let's get this thing installed. Okay, so I just want to show you the wiring one more time with the panel kind of in place here, right? So again, we have our three-way splitter, which is coming from the the ignition wire, right? That's female plug that I soldered on. Male plug here, running to the three-way harness. We've got solder connections here to the um, to the 12 volt plug that's inside the center console. And then we've got crimp connect crimped connectors here that are going to the um, the 12 volt plug and the USB plug on the back side. So should work pretty good, I hope. Um, let's get that thing on. All right, there we go. Got the got the parts back in there. Cup holder still works, always a bonus. Um, so now I gotta get the lid back on the center console and we should be should be good to go. I think those things look pretty good. You can kinda you can kinda see the marks that I made for the screw holes in just the right light, but I think I'm just gonna leave it be for now. Alright, and there it is, all back together. I'm pretty pleased with the way this turned out. Oh, a, little, a couple little scuff marks there, but um, it'll be pretty nice. So now I can plug the 12 volt fridge in the back seat, or if you have passengers riding in the back seat, they can charge USB devices or have 12 volt power here. So I'm um, pretty happy with it. So the, this whole back assembly just literally snaps back into place. So the, the, the outside piece, there's those six clips. Remember, all you gotta do is push it in just to snap it in place. Um, and the same with the, the cup holder attachment here. Um, literally just pop it in, push it into place, um, and it snaps in. Um, and then, of course, there's three screws to hold the cover down. So that's pretty much it. Hope this was helpful.